really hot. I don't know if wherever you guys are, you're copying this heat, but it's very sweaty. So I decided to just take this time to take some time out and do a third video for you guys uh, based on a, a gentle yin and a yang flow. Um, it's a, quite a slow vinyasa style, almost half a base, um, just to help you take the time out to get into your postures and just move, just to create some space and some movement within the body and the meridians and also the mind, but also finding some peace throughout our flow to come into some yin practice here by holding into some postures and some stretches for approximately a minute to a minute and a half, just to help loosen the hamstrings, the glutes and the hips. I hope you find this video enjoyable. Um, anybody can do this. Please just be mindful of your body. Stop as you need to, rest, honor your body and serve it well. It's a good idea not to eat too much before practicing any yoga. You wanna feel quite nice and light and feel the room to move. So I invite you to grab some water. Um, if you've got any blocks or pillows or anything like that that you can set, even blocks, uh, blocks. books are really helpful as well to, to help you to prop up as needed. If you have a strap, please grab a strap. Um, option instead of a strap is to use a towel. You can use your hubby belt if you've got one or anything, even a band is super easy to use as well. So have that nearby, have your water and welcome to your practice. I invite you just to start in a cross-legged position. If this is uncomfortable, sit onto your block and just provide a little bit of space here. Placing one hand on the belly and one hand on the heart I invite you just to tuck your chin down and close your eyes and let's just start to breathe. You may you notice the breath as you take a beautiful inhale. And just slowly exhaling out. Allowing your mind to travel where your breath is. And allow yourself to exhale anything out that you no longer need. Can you even start to notice the belly start to push out as you inhale, really deep breathing here. Notice the shoulders rise as that breath rises all the way up. And on your exhale, allow the shoulders to drop, the rib cage to drop, the belly to tuck in towards the backbone as you engage your Mula Bandha and Uddiyana Bandha. Drawing in for the inhale for four counts. And exhale slowly for four. Two more rounds to just come into your mind, your body and your spirit in this practice. And on this last inhale, can you send yourself some love? And almost exhale with a smile. Inviting your time and space right now into this practice. Gently just blinking open the eyes, take an inhale, draw the hands up. And exhale a very gentle twist, opposite hand to knee. Inhale, draw the hands up. And exhale the opposite hand to knee. Inhale. And exhale. Two more breathing in and exhale. One more in and out. Breathing in, raise the hands above the head and breathe out. Can you scoop the belly in towards the backbone and tuck your chin to your chest, angry cat? Inhale, cow, but sitting down. And exhale, find angry cat, scoop the belly in. And I'm gonna do this on my side so you can see what I'm doing. Take an inhale, raising the hands up. And exhale, really just pushing the belly towards the backbone. Two more breathing in. And breathing out. Breathing in and breathing out. Now conscious to really push away, feel the shoulders engage and the backbone separate. 
from here gently making your way over into your hands and knees. And just coming into that tabletop position. I invite you to take an inhale, lengthen through the right arm and press back on the exhale with the left leg. Making sure that the back's not dipping down and we're not doing this by lifting your chin. I want you to tuck your chin in, so engage Jamandara throat lock. Pull the belly in and up towards your backbone. Press with the left hand away, everything engaged, including the heel. So the quadriceps is squeezed. Inhale and exhale, draw elbow into knee and find that angry cat and hold. Inhale and exhale. One more in and out. Just gently placing the hand down, knees wide, toes touch. Come into child's pose, take a moment. And you really extend here into the palms of the hand, the fingertips nice and light. As you drop your forehead to the floor and pull your hips back over your toes. If your hips don't quite get there, grab a block and place the block or the book onto the backs of your calves and then just allow yourself or place it near your heels to sit down and find that block. Allowing some space and some grounding for the tail. Pressing into the hands, coming all the way up and then just going onto the other side. Take an inhale, draw the left arm in and reach forward. Tucking that chin slightly, engage that Jalandhara lock, pull belly in towards your backbone. Press away with the right heel, coming into that two-point balance. Inhale, draw the elbow into the knee and really curl the spine up, tuck the chin. Exhale, press away. Inhale, draw the elbow into the knee and squeeze. And exhale, press away. Inhale again, draw that elbow into the knee, engage the abundance. And exhale, press away. Dropping down the knee. Again, knees wide, toes touch, child's pose. And then just coming from here, we're going to engage the bundles, the belly muscles here. So Stu and I talk about this a lot more in our workshop that we're doing on Wednesday night, but the core muscles are so important to help the lower back. Oh my goodness, it's finally raining, thank God. So when I talk about the bundles, we have three bundles. I'm just gonna quickly sit up for a moment. We have one bundle through here, our pelvic floor lock. All right, so when I say pull in and up, you tuck it in and under. Our core, our, our Uddiyana Bandha, yeah, you're pulling the ribs in towards the belly button here to engage the tummy muscles, to protect the spine. And Jalandhara lock is our throat lock. So you're pulling your chin slightly in towards your chest, however, pulling your head back. So beautiful, long and straight body here. What can tend to happen sometimes when we stand is we slouch and we stick our tails out causing that lordotic spine, which in turn really just aggravates the back. So when I say belly in towards your backbone, really pull in and towards. Hopefully you can still hear me, I'll talk up a little bit. So from here, we're just going to push straight up into our high plank. So really engaging those bundles that I spoke about before, pressing away with the heel so the quads are squeezed. From here, lift and pull the belly in towards the backbone. What tends to happen is this, people will drop out through the hips. So press the floor away with wide hands and engage the core. You shouldn't be able to talk too well. Now option here, of course, to drop to the knees, but the hips don't drop. So pressing that floor away, take an inhale. And exhale, the elbows wrapping in, they're tracking in line with the rest. Come all the way to the mat. From here, untuck the toes. Shoulders back, find baby cobra. Exhale, soften. Inhale, pressing into the hands, shoulders back, baby cobra. And exhale, soften. Inhale again, baby cobra, shoulders back. And exhale, soften. From here, just pressing into the hands, brace the belly again, find child's pose, knees wide, toes touch. And then from here, finding your downward facing dog. So spread your hands really nice and wide and press into the suction cup of your hand. And then press every single finger pad into the mat. So you have a beautiful, strong grounding here. Finding that first down dog, can you bring your feet in slightly so that they're not all the way up here and you don't wanna have straight legs on your first one. 
So soften your knees, press into your hands and press your chest back towards your thighs. And then just bicycle the legs out. Your feet are hip width apart and looking between your toes. And then just find some stillness in your downward facing dog. Can you let your hair just hang heavy? If you're anywhere near a mirror, it's a really great opportunity just to turn on the side and have a look where you're at, making sure you're not rolled into the shoulders, making sure the legs aren't too straight on this first one and press that chest back. From here, take an inhale and exhale, soften. From here, just walking your feet to your hands. Take an inhale to a halfway lift, so shoulders back and exhale, soften. Inhale, root to rise all the way to stand. And exhale, hands to heart, coming into Samasthi to you. Just holding there for a moment as you just take a few minutes here to come into the breath and to come into your practice. May you close down your eyes and have a moment of stillness here as you thank yourself for your time out. Sometimes the hardest thing that we can do is to be still to bring the mind to a complete stop because all we want to do naturally is move. Take one more breath just here and set yourself an intention, a sun cup with your practice. Blinking open your eyes, let's begin to flow. Coming to the tops of your mats if you're not already. Take an inhale, draw the hands up. And exhale, soften and fold. Inhale to a halfway lift. And exhale, step back, high plank. Stay for the inhale. Exhale, either drop into knees or stay on toes. Chaturanga Dandasana. The elbows go straight back to protect the shoulder joint. Inhale, upward facing dog or cobra. Your choice. And exhale, press the floor away. Coming back through your child's pose or straight up to down dog. From down dog, looking forward, bend your knees, come into crouch. And step to the top of your mat. Inhale to a halfway lift and exhale, soften and fold. Root to rise all the way, inhale. And exhale, soften and fold. Breathe in halfway and exhale, step back, high plank. From here, drop into knees or staying on toes, Chaturanga Dandasana, high to low. Inhale, either upward facing dog or cobra. Press the chest forward if you're in your up dog and quads are off the mat. Exhale, brace the belly, scoop it in and up, downward facing dog. Looking forward, bend your knees, press into your hands, jump step or float. Inhale to a halfway lift and exhale, soften. Root to rise, inhale, always stuck the spine and exhale, soften. Breathing in halfway, step back, high plank. Drop your back knee or your, sorry, your front knee and press into back outer edge. Inhale. Coming up, modified side plank. Exhale, come back high plank. Straight to the other side. Drop that knee down. Press into the back outer edge of the foot. Stack your joints on the supporting arm and inhale up. Now you can either look down or you can look up so long as that is okay. Can you lift that top hip, creating space in the underside of your waist? Coming back down, find high plank. And from high plank, can you draw your right knee into your nose, tiger curl. Stepping the leg all the way through, drop your bottom knee, untuck your toes, inhale, lunge. And exhale, softly sink back and find half monkey. And we're just going to stay here for a moment just to stretch. Now soften that front knee as much as you need to. Take an inhale, halfway lift. And exhale, soften and fold. Staying here for three full breaths. On every breath you may find you get more length. From here, press into the front heel. Take an inhale, arms up, crescent moon or low lunge. And exhale, hands through your heart, tuck your toe, float back, find high to low, Chaturanga Dandasana. Inhale to an upward facing dog, shoulders back. 
and exhale down dog beautiful from here bending your knees press into your hands jump step or float inhale halfway lift and exhale soften and fold root to rise all the way and exhale forward fold inhale halfway lift and exhale step back high plank beautiful from here find your vinyasa high to low you can always skip this you don't have to do every single push up and just end up in down dog beautiful from here just drawing your left knee into your nose coming into tiger curl and then stepping it through drop your bottom knee untuck the toes inhale press through the heel so you get your glutes and then just exhale coming down and just finding yourself here just arms back for a moment beautiful taking inhale again and exhale coming back into half monkey i realized i added something on on that side so i'll make sure i add that into the next part of the flow and not perfect <laughs> spending time here to inhale the shoulders up and exhale soften down three full breaths now soften that front knee as much as you need to here in half monkey soften the shoulders breathe When our hamstrings get too tight, they tend to shorten and pull our lower back out. So a lot of our back pain can stem from these guys here in our glutes and our hips. It's so important we look after them. Slowly take an inhale, press through the heel to generate your glute into fire. Inhale, crescent move. And exhale, hands through heart, frame the foot, scoop the belly in and up to float the foot through and exhale, chaturanga. Inhale, upward facing or cobra and exhale down dog from down dog just looking forward bend your knees jump step or float all the way into utkatasana toes together heels apart sink down low utkatasana now from here making sure you're not sticking your tail out and again causing that bend into the lower back so pull your belly in and tuck it under and drop your tail squeezing your quads together so much so toes touch heels apart draw your quadriceps in and maybe smile coming into a beautiful chair pose and i guarantee if you love this posture it will love you back you know the things in life that are sent to challenge us is there to change us be with them feel the feelings and embrace them and send them love take an inhale and exhale soften halfway lift inhale and then step jump or float back through your vinyasa elbow soft if you jump back inhale and exhale down dog inhale right leg to start bend and open on the exhale press into both hands here and push with your heel inhale draw the knee into the nose tiger curl tuck the chin arch the spine step the leg through press through the heel inhale arms forward really driving through that back heel and squeeze your back quad exhale aeroplane arms inhale crescent lunge and exhale hands through heart left hand down right hand up vashi stasana sat oh, sorry <laughs> lunge twist we're getting there vashi stasana now so drawing that right foot over stacking the feet or of course drop that knee down and find that side plank stack the joints on the left and reach the fingertips up towards the sky lift that top hip to try and touch the ceiling exhale come all the way back down and step through find high lunge inhale from high lunge exhale find airplane step through and find your balance now soften that right knee as much as you need push with your back heel inhale raise the shoulders and exhale draw your hands into heart and then dropping your right hand down to that book or a block placing the hand on the block left hand to hip starting to find Adha Chandrasana half moon 
Now check in with the belly. Can you pull the belly button in towards the backbone? Press with your heel, everything activated here. And then take an inhale, maybe that left arm will come up. Up to you if you straighten that front leg. Be with your posture and be kind to yourself. Maybe that bottom hand will float, maybe you'll bring it to your heart. Take one more inhale and exhale, soften here. Inhale, bending into that knee and draw the knee into the chest. And just relax the shoulders down. So standing here for two full breaths. Pull the bundas in here, so make sure that the spine is really nice and long. Take an inhale, draw the arms up. And exhale, cross the ankle over the knee and sit down and open the hips, exhale. Opportunity for an arm balance here, if anybody knows it, I'm sweating so much, so I'm not gonna go there today. But if you do go into that arm balance, you make sure that the elbow is on the inside of the foot and you come down. I'll give it a shot. I am very sweaty. But listen to the body as well. You'll know if you go there or not. The hands plant down and you find some grounding. The toes tuck around the elbows and you start to lift. Holding there for three, two, tuck the toes back under. Use the core and slowly come back up. Again, just listen to your body and just go with what feels okay. Things take time and just be patient and celebrate the little rings of even just standing still. Take an inhale, the arms up, and then exhale, clasp the hands together, find warrior three. If it is too much with your hands together, draw hands to heart. Take an inhale here and step back. Hopefully I'll miss that block. I know it's somewhere. Can you open up and find warrior two? Track your right knee over your right toes, loosen the hands, press into the back, outer edge of your foot. On the inhale, raise up and the exhale, soften. I invite you to just be with this posture. So can you gaze out through that middle finger here? I'm pressing through my right heel, my toes are actually lifted. My right quad is gently pressing out so I'm activating through my adductor as my left quad rotates inwards. I'm really pressing into that back outer edge of my left foot and I'm sweating so much. The shoulders are relaxed here and I invite you to now smile. Take an inhale and exhale, soften. One more, breathing in. And exhale, soften. From here, inhale, straighten the front leg. And then just gently just turning back, just a gentle swivel the arms, look down your leg, watch your back. And as you exhale, finding a Tita Trikonasana triangle. I like to step my back foot in just a little bit and start to lean towards the front. I'm tipping my left hip back and spinning my arms around in a block, book, whatever is lovely here, to just find that beautiful length in the spine. Really engaging again through the bundas here. And as I said, that block is super helpful. If not, you don't have to use it. You can even just touch your hand on the inside of your calf. The eyes can be down. Again, opportunity to use more of the bundas and the core by floating the hand up to half anjali. So half breath. Take one more breath. And as you exhale, gently bring the hands up to the hips. I love these two stretches combined. They're just beautiful stretch for the hamstring, the hips and the glutes. From here, just squaring off the hips to the front of your room. Take an inhale, roll the shoulders back, your feet are about a meter apart. And exhale, soften, pull the belly in towards the backbone, find that flat back. Take an inhale, and exhale, soften and fold. Option, grabbing that block, soften the front knee. And just resting the hands to a block here. This can be super intense through the hamstring. And we're just gonna hold here for a good eight breaths. So first coming into just our first still standing posture. If the block is a little bit too much or you want a little bit more depth, just feel free to release. And drop the chin in. If you want more, you can start to straighten that front leg or step the back leg back slightly. I invite you just to be with your pyramid posture here. Spending another five breaths. Sometimes on the inhale, it's really lovely to raise up and then exhale, soften.
I invite you to just let go of any thoughts. And I mentioned before, it's so difficult to be still. So if you're fighting that stillness, just be with it. The more you practice being still, the easier it gets. Take one more inhale and exhale, soften. From here, just I invite you to just plant down your hands, bend to the knees and step that left leg back. Coming into our lizard posture. So right foot is forward. And you can either stay right here into that low lunge position. Again, we're coming into another in posture here, just breathing and just starting to slow that down And before we go to the other side. If you'd like a little bit more, the right hand can come on the inside of the right foot. And I'm just gonna face this way for a second so you'll see what I mean here. If you want more into lizard, you can roll onto that outer edge of the right foot, but the knee is tracking over my toes, so it's pushing out. Now, I used to really love just gently pushing onto that right knee. It's completely up to you, sort of, where you go with this posture. Um, a block also is really handy just to, if you're sort of coming down and you want something to, to rest your head on, then find that. Not just finding your version of lizard here and just staying for another formal breath. My goodness, my dog has got a, well, developed a bad habit lately of eating dead lizards. So every time I mention the word lizard, I can almost smell her body. It's about three or four days until she can get it out of her system. So lizards aren't really particularly my friend at the moment. Take one more inhale. And as you exhale, soften, slowly, Press into the hands, engage the bundles, the belly muscles. And you bring that right hand on the outside of the right foot. And then from here, press into the ground, bringing that knee into the chest again, just to hold, use your core. And then maybe exhale, three-legged vinyasa, your choice. In our upward facing. And exhale down. Just breathing here, pedal the feet out. Moving to the other side, we're going to move through our Utkatasana, this time with a toe balance. So looking forward, press into the hands, jump step or float. Inhale, Utkatasana, toes together, heels apart. Exhale, aeroplane arms. Last in our standing series. Inhale, up onto the toes if you like. Squeeze your quads together here and then exhale, aeroplane arms and sink into that squat but stay on your toes. Inhale, draw the hands up. And exhale, soften and fold. How do we go? Breathe in, halfway lift. Your choice if you jump, step or float. If you jump, please land with bent elbows and a strong core. Inhale to an upward facing. And exhale down. Just pedal the feet out here. And then just gently taking inhale, raise the left leg to sky. Knee to nose, draw it into your nose, so tiger curl. And step the leg all the way through, plant the heel. Press through your back heels, you inhale up, high lunge, Anjaniasana. And drop the hips on the exhale. Inhale, press through the heel. And exhale, coming all the way down, right hand down, left hand up, lunge twist. Taking an inhale here and exhale, finding Vashi Stas in a side plank, sweeping that leg all the way in around. So option, of course, drop that bottom knee. Your choice here, stack your feet, lift your hips, breathe. Take one more inhale and exhale, find your lunge however you get there. Taking an inhale, present. And exhale, arms back, lean into your front heel, loosen the toes and fly. Aeroplane, Descartes in Soften that left knee. Inhale the hands into the heart and if you need to, pop your foot down and just find your block. From here, take an exhale, plant your hands, left hand onto the block, soften the knee, right hand to hip. 
Press with that back heel to activate your core. And if that is okay, pull the belly in towards the backbone and inhale that right arm up. And start to find your half moon, however you would like to be here. Maybe drawing that hand in if you like in your practice. Again, just listening to the body. Take one more breath. And then slowly start to draw that knee into the chest. And we just take a moment of stillness here. Can you again pull the belly in towards the backbone? Maybe curl your toes up, soften or straighten your supporting leg here. Take an inhale, the hands up. And exhale, crossing that ankle over. Again, just coming down into that beautiful, like here I've got the bench, glute stretch here, hands to heart and just breathe. Now really making the most of this by making your own. Either staying here, and I'll face this way to do it this time, if there's anybody who'd like to give this a go. What's really important is you listen to the hips and you listen to the knees here. So I probably won't be able to do it now on this side. So as you come down, the elbow will go on the inside of the toes here and you create a shelf. The hands spread nice and wide and you bend into the knee. The toes are tucked around that elbow as I press into the palms and I attempt to float. Now if I wasn't so sweaty, you can lift that back leg off too, but I'm slipping everywhere. So slowly coming back, toe curls in, land the heel, come all the way back up, hands to heart. Beautiful, inhale the hands all the way up. And exhale, find warrior three. So again, if it's too much with those hands out in front, bring the hands to heart. Soften that left knee as much as you need, take an inhale. And exhale, stepping it back, find warrior two. So again, press into the left heel and open up the arms. Press into that right outer edge and spin your right quad in and push your left quad out. Relax and then sink. Take an inhale, just breathing in and then exhale. Soften, soften, soften. Now remember, you can bring that foot in if you don't want as much leverage and stretch through the legs but always softening down on that exhale. Take one more breath in, and exhale, soften. Beautiful, so holding this here for a moment. Take an inhale, straighten your arms, and then just gently look behind. On your exhale, can we find that a tip to trick asana? So maybe stepping that back foot in a little bit here, bracing through your bundles, take an inhale, and exhale, lengthen, 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 spin the arms around again, placing that block on the inside, and then finding that beautiful triangle pose. I love this posture. I used to always struggle with it. My hamstrings used to be that tight. And now I just completely have learnt to love it, and it loves me back so much. So your choice if you want to use that block or not. Taking one more inhale. Exhale, brace through the core, so slow. Start to bring the hands to the hips. Step that left foot in so that you're about a meter apart and then the toes are slightly facing out. Shoulders roll up, back and down. Inhale, brace the bundles and exhale. Start to slowly tip forward. Stopping halfway, take an inhale and exhale, soften. Here we go, starting to hold. Using a block or two or whatever you want to just soften into this posture. Again, really soft through this front left knee and just really listening in to this left hamstring. So soften the knees, use whatever you need here just to feel that stretch from the insertion point in your glutes right down to the knee and then the calf, just breathe. Again, play with this one to feel where your edge is. Take one more breath here. Exhale, soften. Brace the belly, press into the hands and just gently drop that buck knee. Lizard posture. 
Maybe walking that left foot out, untuck your toes. And maybe just staying here into that lunge. Option, of course, to push that knee out again. Roll onto that outer edge if you drop that knee out to the side. And start to come down either to a block or wherever you like. Hold. Take this where you like. Again, working with your own safety realm in your own body. No force, no competition. Just listen in winter when your body tells you just to back off. And then so slowly press into the hands. And we're just going to finish off in that tiger curl for a bit of strength. So left knee into the chest and hold. You can always drop to your knee here as well. And then press up, down dog. From down dog, inhale your right leg to spine. Opportunity, if anybody would like to, bend and open and maybe take it over into wild thing. Just being gentle, listening to the body, it's completely choice. Exhale, looking down, brace the belly. Opportunity also for an arm balance here if anybody would like to go into it, your choice. And then just finding that pigeon posture, right knee to uh, right elbow, right wrist. And just starting to come down to the mat. Your left toes are headed towards the left side of your mat. The knee does, or the chin does not have to be parallel, but you want your hips square. Inhale the shoulders up and exhale softening forward. Grabbing a block, and this is where two are quite helpful here. You can place one under your head, yeah, and the other one underneath your hip bone here to make sure, underneath your sit bones here, so to make sure that when you come down, your sit bones are really nice and flat, and I just invite you to stay. Just allowing that stretch into the glutes. It's so normal to feel any tensions come up here and to rise. And I spoke about it in my class this morning. I invite you to be with it. I had a beautiful conversation with a really good friend, Tam, who's a teacher also. And she told me that her teacher told her to be with the feelings, invite them around for dinner, to a meal that you've cooked with love and compassion and kindness. Serve them the best wine you've got with the best utensils, the best food and the best plates. Give them all the love in the world and be with the feelings that scare you the most. Embrace the fear embrace those feelings of unworthiness and self-loathing negativity and doubt be with them and feel every single emotion and be with them for as long as they stay around and then allow them to pass and know that they will serve them with love and they will treat you with love back but don't just bury them, don't just put them to the side. I invite you to be there, to be raw with those feelings when they arise, because there's always something on the other side. And they are there to teach us a lesson and to bring us a gift to learn from that to be better people. Take one more breath, slowly coming up. And then I invite you just to roll around however works for you and just find our straddle. I have a feeling I've gone over half an hour, but we're just going to do a couple more postures just to stretch out and take in. Now with your straddle, it's important to maybe sit on a block if you'd like to, to allow some height within the spine and some length. Now you can soften your knees as much as you need, but if it's okay for you, you're welcome to sit down and just allow everything to be relaxed take an inhale for length and as you exhale can you tip forward onto your sit bones and start to lead with the heart and with the chin and just slowly start to soften find your fold it is not about force it is not how hard or how far you'd like to be but we're trying to relax the spine finding a beautiful fold here 
and also really lengthening through our adductors, our inner thighs. Spending five breaths here to inhale and exhale, soften, fold. Take three more breaths. One of my favorite quotes is from Rumi and he tells us, what you seek is seeking you. So no more force, no more massive goals. Just do what you can do in this very moment. Ask yourself, what can I do right now? And always ask yourself, is this moment serving me what I'm doing? And if it is not, change it. Start to create new habits. We all have the ability to do so. Take one more breath in. And exhale, soften. Press into your fingertips, tuck your chin. To come out of this, gently bring the knees in. Press into the heels here. As you just gently lift up reverse tabletop. And then slowly just finding your downward dog on the other side, nearly through the practice. So coming over and pressing up. This time your left leg will inhale. Opportunity to stay here or bend and open and maybe finding that wild thing if you would like, completely up to you what you'd like here. Take one more inhale. Now looking down again, that opportunity to have a bit of a play here with the balance. So as you come up and around, you can draw that left elbow, uh, left knee over to your left elbow, tuck the right elbow in and find the hip crease and then start to find the balance. And then maybe planting that foot down, use your belly muscles to bring the left knee to the left wrist, toes to the right and start to gently soften down, untuck the toes, inhale. And again, using that block under the left hip, start to find that pigeon posture or sleeping swan. Soften, soften and soften. Now staying there for eight breaths. If this is too much for anybody on that front knee, you can do this posture on your back. It looks like this. You'll lie down to protect the spine. And I invite you just to put the foot onto the knee and then just reach forward and grab through either the back of the quad or you can reach right through and grab the shin and just hold here. Completely your choice. If you want more, of course, just bring that leg in slightly. My goodness, it's been the weirdest weather here. It just poured a moment ago and... <laughs> Now the sun's out and it's like super hot again. Hmm. Take two more breaths. And slowly pressing up, engage the core. Roll onto that back hip. And this time, Paschimottanasana, so your feet will come forward. Again, just lengthening through the hamstrings and allowing a fold. Now, of course, you can just sit here and just allow yourself to fold in. If you'd like a bit more, you're welcome to place your block under your hips and under the sit bones. Come onto the front part of the sit bones though. Soften the knees, inhale, belly muscles on, and then start to just tip forward. And of course, option without the block. So again, forward onto the sit bones, allow the fold, no force. So start just nice and light and use the breath to inhale and exhale, soften. Now if your feet are straight and the knees are, um, uh, sorry, if the legs are straight and the knees are also straight, then you please flex your toes, pull the toes back. Moving through this just for three to four more breaths.
Again, no force. Take one more breath and exhale, soften. Slowly coming up to rise, always stack the spine. So gently can you just walk one foot in and then the other. So the feet are hip width apart and gently just bracing the core. Such a slow windshield wiper left to right. We're going to spend our twist seated um, before we hit our mats for Shavasana today. I hope you've enjoyed your practice and found some space. From here, just extending the feet out and I'll face this way. Crossing your right leg over your left. So the same leg out, the same hand will raise up. Can you exhale, lengthen? And then wrap the elbow joint around the knee and grab the back of the thigh, drawing the right arm underneath and tuck the chin to chest, finding your twist. If you want more, you're welcome to draw more on that knee and really twist around and look more under that shoulder. Slowly come back to center. Extending the other leg in front. If you can, flex the toes on the extended leg. Take an inhale, same leg, same arm. Exhale, reach, 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 and then wrap the hand places onto the back of the quadricep. The left shoulder goes down as you look over the shoulder to you, just tucking your chin. Slowly allow yourself to come back to center. Now, I always invite Shavasana however you'd like to play and I invite you when you come down to your mat to support yourself to, so you protect your spine. And I'm going to finish Shavasana today with my heels together in butterfly position, Sukta Baddha Konasana. If this is too much, you're welcome to just bend the knees and knock the knees together here. But if you'd like, of course, you're welcome to extend the feet out in front into traditional Shavasana. Arms out extended. So please find what works for you. Allowing the knees to just gently go up to the side. Can you pick your shoulder blades up and roll them under to open the heart? The fingertips are curled. The knees are soft. And just allow yourself to be. Nowhere to be and nowhere to go. Take an inhale. Open the mouth, exhale. And stay. And you start to make some gentle movements with the neck left to right. Keep the eyes closed. It's 
starting to deepen the breath and feel that prana, that life force energy just flowing through the body. Gently and slowly, if your knees are out, use one hand and then the other to draw the knees in. And just gently and slowly, can you hug the knees into the chest? Keeping the eyes closed when you're ready, just rocking to one side. And I invite you to stay here for three breaths. Just keeping in that ball here while you just take a moment. We're in a world where we keep filling our cup and our mind and our headspace with more things, more material, emotional, physical things. We're getting busier and busier and busier by the moment and we don't know how we're getting so stressed and anxious but everything is taking up our time. I invite you to really look in at what's taking up your space, how much time you're spending on social media, uh, how much time you spend scrolling and not looking around you at the clouds, the grass, the water, feeling the scent. Go out there and live. Practice yoga and then get on with your life and go and do the things that you love. Our quote today is from Lao Tzu. Very simply, he says, when your cup is full, learn when to stop. In your own time, just making your way to a seated position, eyes closed, drawing hands to heart, Anjali Mudra. I invite you to just draw your hands to your mouth as you take this moment to speak with clear and loving intentions towards self and to others. Drawing hands to your third eye center, raise your chin gently. And I invite you to think with clear and loving intentions towards self and to others. Sealing off our practice. Namaste, meaning my soul honors your soul. Namaste. I hope you enjoyed your practice today, tomorrow, whenever you do this video. I always invite any questions, comments. Um, I can be found on meghq.com. Stuart and I will be doing a lower back pain and core workshop next Wednesday, the 17th of January at the place, Charlestown Square. That's at 6.30 p.m. There's limited spots. Um, you can book online through Mind Body, the app, search for Meg HQ, that's capital M-E-G, capital H-Q, or again, jump onto the website. We really look forward to seeing you if you've suffered any lower back pain before. We've certainly had our fair share. It's a very simple, fundamental workshop. There's no sweat or, you know, vigorous movements involved. It's a lot of stretching, a beautiful hour spent in yin and stew going through the meridians and the anatomy of the body to help you understand your body more, whereas I'll be taking you through um, a very almost Pilates based core practice to help you prevent lower back pain from happening. Thank you again. Any comments, please leave below. Have a beautiful Saturday afternoon and weekend. Namaste.